one uh, that takes us to um, our one item on general business, participation in CalPERS advanced payment to lower unfunded pension liability. Um, on page three to seven, do we have a staff report? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Mark Spindle, the city finance director, um, city of Santa Cruz. The item before you is to participate in the city's prepayment in June of 2018 of $8 million to CalPERS is one of the uh, strategies that the city has of uh, balancing and offsetting future costs. We've set up pension trusts to decrease costs in the pension system. We can raise cost sharing. And one of the last measures we have is starting to pay down our actual liabilities to CalPERS. Um, there's moderate risk in paying, sending money to the state. Um, but at this point in time, it's, it's a clear a benefit to the city. And the city made that call and made that payment in June. The library employees system are blended in with all the city employees. Um, so by default, paying, making a prepayment in June for the city also paid down liabilities related to the library system. So that transaction has already occurred. And what we wanted to make sure we get before this board is the opportunity to have that discussion. And should the board want to affirm their participation in the city's $8 million payment, or not, then we, we, we'd have some work to do to try to back out, back that transaction out as we could. And I would um, say that, um, from my perspective, we have uh, adequate unreserved fund balance, and my recommendation would be to use fund balance to participate in this payout. So, the, so when we looked at the the library system, when we cited the city's payment, uh, the library system has nearly 40%, 38% in reserves, total reserves, but designated reserves and available fund balance. Um, this payment will bring that down to 32%, so that there's plenty of cash capacity from the library, and I totally agree with the uh, recommendations. recommendation. It, it, it's just wise. The, that money is sitting in the library fund earning 2% interest versus being the library system being assessed at 7 quarter percent interest rate next year. Right now, the rate is 7.375%. So it's just wise to divert some of that funding towards paying down that liability, reducing the interest costs ultimately saving about 50000 a year annually in pension payments. Um, there is a little bit of a loss in the portfolio, so the net gain to the library system is about $36,000 annually. Um, all told, there's about $960,000 in savings to the system by making this payment. And so we're recommending a motion that would do both one and two, but not three. Correct. So one is joining the city's payments, um, and two is approving the budget allocation to make the payment from the available fund balance. Up to six hundred and eighty-nine thousand nine hundred and eleven dollars Okay, are there any questions for the purposes before I turn it up to the public? So okay. when you what did you put in the numerator, what did you put in the denominator when you were determining the the pro rate, the proportion of Santa Cruz employees that were library employees? Pension costs, so the direct pension payment related to salary compensation. So PERS is, a, is paid out on as a percent of payroll. Right. So we're using the actual payroll that was made, not not FT account, but the actual payroll by employees. So right. so for every employee, you have a spreadsheet of you know regular pay, and then amount that gets sent paid to CalPERS Correct. for every employee in the city of Santa Cruz. Correct. Some of them are library employees, and some of them work yep. in the water department. And so whatever that number was. That was the numerator for of library employees, yeah. and then the total was your total payment to CalPERS. Correct. So I understand yeah. library pay, payroll over total payroll. Yes, and, and there, there's a schedule in the staff report that backs up that calculation. But it's different than library payroll over total payroll. It's payments to PERS from library employees divided it's, it's by... Specifically the pension costs. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. It's not total payroll. Yeah. Which is the basis of payroll. Right. But right. because we have so many temp employees, I would, uh, yeah. I would yeah, well, I was thinking about that, the temp employee and, and whether or not they were enrolled in PERS or not. And so I just wanted to, we didn't talk about that beforehand. But, but this would then capture. Yeah, this is sure to make sure that the only portion of cost being charged to the library system are related to the PERS payments that the library system would make. The one wonky thing about it is, is PEPRA employees because. Um, this is focused on the unfunded liability. Um, so, it, but there, well, those costs would still be rolled in. 
it would, but if the proportions were different, it would tend to change. If the proportion of pepper employees were different in the library, then I, I mean, I'm getting pretty yes. far into the weeds here, sure. but. Which gets to another recommendation that's staff report, not necessarily for direction today, but to bring back to the board yeah. of funding an actual report to really delve down and identify what that liability is in a snapshot of time. Yeah, the more I thought about that report, the more I sort of started identifying in my head some tricks to it. So I just wanted to ask those questions. Thank you. Do you think the difference would be material? Uh, I, I, I probably not, unless there was a significant difference in the number of pepper employees, you know, the proportion of pepper employees in the library and in the city of Santa Cruz. At this, you know, 10 years from now, may start deviating. I mean, we're still relatively new in life cycles in, in PEPRA, so I, I wouldn't suspect the major material number here. Yeah. Could I ask uh, the fund balance that we have before and after this payment would take place? Yeah, there's uh, $2.1 million was the uh, available fund balance, and it would end up at $1.5 million, $1.5 million. Seven. That's after full funding the reserves. So you still have uh, there's still if you add up all the reserves and the remaining fund balance, you're still 32 percent set aside in cash. Of so this is above the we're minimum. Still above. Yes, we're still yes. Yes. Far above. Far above. Okay. We're still ahead of the curve. We hope that this reduces pension costs by thirty-six thousand dollars a year for the yeah. Yeah, pension costs will go down fifty, but there we have to acknowledge there's some loss in portfolio earnings. So it shouldn't add about thirty-six. Right, assuming we didn't spend the portfolio. Yes, assuming you didn't spend it uh, elsewhere. On other right, library investments. I guess I have, um, I think, um, I mean, I, I'm okay with uh, with this uh, one-time issue, but I would be concerned if we did big ones in the future, uh, because I, I worry about our fund balance, number one. I worry about the next recession and that we may, you know, that additional cushion, especially when we open up all our new branches, may be needed to cushion us through a new recession. So I worry about spending down that ability. I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember in, when I was uh, city manager in Watsonville, we had huge reserves, or what I thought were huge at that time, and we spent a big chunk of it on our Civic Plaza building, and then the recession hit in 2009, and I spent down all my reserves down to the bare minimum, and I wish I had that back in some way. So I just worried, you know, I just want to make sure that we have really ample reserves because uh, this library system is going to have a lot of fiscal pressures in the future as we open up all the new branches. Uh, the other thing is that I uh, worry about is just, I understand the concept of paying down, and I think hopefully it'll work, but I just worry about PERS, about giving them our money, because it's kind of a, um, it's like, in, the concept is you're prepaying your mortgage, right? So you have a 30-year mortgage, and you have this debt, and so you're prepaying it, so you're going you're gonna to reduce your overall interest costs. That makes sense. But I worry that PERS is, the, is not as not like your mortgage in that they can change the interest rate and they can change the principal amount at any time. So they can say, oh, we've changed our assumptions and now the principal you owed is now double. And so, I, you know, which they've done in the past, right? They, they changed the amortization period from 20 to 30. They've changed the you know, other assumptions. And so it's kind of a moving target. And ultimately, in theory, you're still saving money but it's kind of scary paying down PERS when there's so much uncertainty over how they're managing your money. And um, in theory, it should still work, but I just, I'm nervous about, I, I get nervous about that. So I hope in the future that if we do uh, do any more prepayments that it's a smaller amount so that we don't have our, our fund balance hit. Yeah, I would anticipate that we probably wouldn't be in a position to do that after this. Um, and subsequent budget conversations are definitely going to be, from my perspective, more conservative for the points that you listed. I'm curious, Marcus, to some of the things that Carlos was saying about his concerns. What's your sense of kind of um, how vulnerable, if you will, um, we would be to some of those potential changes? I can talk to two things. One is, we've talked about this before, the library's revenue base that it can count on to grow is sales tax. That one growth revenue base, everything else is fixed payments from the members. So those payments can be renegotiated and go up, obviously. Um, but the growth has to come from sales tax otherwise, and sales tax is a vulnerable revenue base. Um, maybe not with the Wayfair decision and when California implements that and online payments start flowing back to uh, where people are making the payments from. Um, but right now it's still a vulnerable place. It's 
getting eroded from a lot of different uh, impacts of the uh, expansion of the economy into different places. Um, and we we're just talking about 3D printers and how many more things are going to start being printed at your home instead of being bought in the store. Uh, so there is vulnerability from a future forecast standpoint on that revenue base. There's vulnerability from a recession that might be 12 months, 18 months around the corner. Um, so there are different vulnerabilities. I think this pain is still allows flexibility. The reserves are fully funded. They're still on top of that additional funding set aside. Um, the comments regarding PERS are, are duly noted. Um, but should those payments increase, then the liability increases and the interest payments will go up. Um, we're still saving, reducing, um, instead of paying 7% interest, 7.375% 7 interest on that payment, we're, we're not now. So that's, that's bonus. We're paying down that higher credit card debt first. I, I would echo some of Carlos's comments, and I think I would add that, <clears throat> you know, I, I certainly understand the, the theory. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a great theory to be able to write a check to CalPERS and say, hey, we're done with our UAL, we have no, long, no longer have a long-term liability, and you know, we just have our normal cost card forward. Um, in practice, it hasn't played out that way, particularly over the last decade. Um, that being said, the notion of the library not participating and trying to back us out of the calculation, um, you know, the proportion conversation we had earlier is just the first of the assumptions that you have to work in. And then over time, there'd be the issue of what the actual CalPERS return rate was. Um, it would get really complicated. So I think, I think we need to participate here. My preference on a go-forward basis would be that we, we use a PERS trust um, and save outside of PERS and invest it and then have it available to use to pay, pay PERS payments in the future. We can see what the balance is. We can see how it grows over time. And there's the flexibility to use it effectively like a reserve account um, down the road should we need to, um, whereas this money, once it's paid to CalPERS, it's, it's no longer accessible in the future. So I would support it in this case, but I think on a go-forward basis, I would, I would look far more favorably on a PERS trust to accomplish the same sort of goal. Um, so Burst Trust unique to the library? Well, I don't think that, I don't think we could probably have a Burst Trust unique to the library. I think it would need to be. We could. We could have an independent Burst Trust? You're an independent body with employees. There might be some legal nuance to confirm, but the principle is you could. And actually, that's probably would be my recommendation. The city may still be interested in making payments. But I think we want to understand how we prepare for that so that the city goes forward, how the library might back out of or not participate in that going forward. Yeah, and even if we had a purse trust and it was part of the city of Santa Cruz and we knew that you know 23% of the purse trust was library money, uh, you know, we can, that's a detail that could be worked out down the road, but that would be my preference. Any other questions at this point? Okay, um, are, uh, is there any member of the public that would like to address this item? Okay, seeing none, we'll take it back to the board. Is there further discussion on this matter or is there um, a motion? Okay. Um, and so just to clarify, um, can you put into the record the two um, items that you're approving and assuming it does not include number three? It does not include. So I move approval of the staff recommendation to uh, pay the library's proportion of the unfunded liability, make the library's proportion of payment to CalPERS whatever that is, $689,911. Um, and then in addition, directing the, are we directing the preparation of a actuary? We have that, I'll um, put that in front of you at this time. It's, okay. it's so the, I think increasing the budget allocation. Yeah, okay, okay. increasing the budget allocation. I think that should be probably agendized and discussed in the future, with your recommendation. Okay, well that's fine, but I do think, I think that that, to get a handle on how that proportion would work uh, it would be a useful thing. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? None. Passes.